just got out of the car and properly grim start to a marathon. So we've got like a half mile walk from where we're allowed to stop. Um, yeah, walking to the start line now. I have got 25 minutes until kickoff and I need to register. I woke up at city o'clock in the morning, woke my long suffering support crew of a family up, drove nearly three hours to a tiny, rainy, muddy, cold village on the south coast and joined the start line of a 27.3 mile winter trail marathon over the South Downs. <laughs> I'm, I'm a bit tired. 4 a.m. start was not good. How do you feel wake up early? I feel great. I feel like I could run a marathon in the rain. Oh yeah, and uh, <laughs> how do you feel that um, you've got loads more to do after this? Loads more am I doing after this? Events. Oh, loads more events. Oh, yeah. I'm looking forward to them. This is, this is the kickstart of 2024. Scarlet do your stretching, come on. Do your stretching. <laughs> This video is my can I run a trail marathon in the winter video. This is the first time I'm going to attempt to run a trail marathon and I'm going to do it in the middle of January. So I joined the registration queue to get my number and I lined up at the start line with someone dressed as Mario, waited for the safety briefing, which had no mention of all the mud we were about to endure. So, um, yeah, straight up the hill there, absolutely beautiful if you get tired. The marathon I've chosen is called the South Downs and Arundel Marathon. It is also known as the Winter Trails Marathon. And only two days before, we had endured a couple of weeks of sub-zero temperatures. So I thought that my biggest challenge going into this race was going to be the cold and frozen terrain. I was wrong. I was very very wrong. Last night we had a storm come over the whole of the south of the country with high winds and a lot of rain. The temperatures had risen from below zero to about nine degrees, which is good. So my challenge wasn't the hard frozen trails anymore. My challenge was now mud and lots of it. So much mud that you couldn't shake a stick at it, even if you could find a stick in all of the mud. This event went from a winter challenge to a full on endurance event caked in mud. Five, four, three, two, one, go! The buzz and hype of the start line was then broken as the very British marathon runners, like we are, queued for a tiny footbridge over a stream. <laughs> this event is officially my first ever trail marathon race. The whole point of why I signed up for it was to kickstart my post Christmas run training, to test my current fitness levels and to have fun in the winter sun. There wasn't much sun. I'm used to running on the trails and footpaths around my home in Essex, which are not too dissimilar to the trails and footpaths on this route. However, there is one other thing this trail marathon route has that's in addition to the Armageddon levels of mud, and that's the hills. And I don't just mean cheeky little rolling hills. This route has several huge climbs that just after the start line has a huge mammoth scramble of 775 feet of a climb. <sighs> okay, we started really muddy so far. Um, and we're on the climb, I think to the highest point of the run. I think it's the highest point of the race. And we're about a mile or so in. Yeah, steep. Okay, probably steep bit here. I don't know if you can see this on camera, how steep this is. I don't know if you can see there. Those are people 
climbing. In total, this route has almost 3,000 feet of climbing across the whole route. And the first climb that was just after the start line was 775 feet. This gives an indication of how high this first climb was, if the GoPro doesn't do it justice. Now I know and I knew I was not fast on runs, whether it be a park run or a marathon. But what I didn't know is that when everyone else slows or even walks up slow, long climbs, I'm able to power up them significantly faster than those around me. I use this to my advantage across this race. And later on in this race, it pays dividends when I'm able to pick off some slightly faster runners and I gain a few places on my finish. I will add that I am a lot slower than most of the other runners on this course on the flats, which is to be expected. Looking at me compared to everyone else starting this race, I'm twice their weight and almost taller than all of them. But on the hills, I am fast and I enjoyed using this to my advantage. At this point, the pace was slow, and even though it was a steep gradient, very steep, and I respect those wanting to take it easy here, as there is a real risk of injury if you slip, I tried to follow another runner and find a more direct route past those going slightly slower uphill. Well, you can always, yeah. And it's no pressure, is it? It's just... So at this point, because of the scramble, all I'm doing is filming people's butts. The grass was easier to climb on as the actual foot placements on the marked route were thick clay and they were like mud, very slippery, which is probably why everyone was going so slow. This was a real, real struggle. Down. Oh, great heights. I then reached the top. The worst bit was the vertigo I get when I climb hills like this. I got the same sort of feeling when I was doing the Yorkshire Three Peaks. Okay, we're at the top. Would you mind if I put you on camera? No, no, it's fine. I'm running along, is it Rian? Rian, hi. Rian. After that mammoth climb, we got to the top of it and it thinned everyone out. So we went from running the first couple of K like a park run, all, all, all ganged up with the front runners to now being all thinned out. Did you say this was your second marathon? Yes, yeah, second one ever. Second marathon. And it's this one. Because this is, is it officially an ultra? Because it's longer than a... Marathon distance, isn't it? I don't know, we need to check this. This is for bragging rights. For bragging rights. Because this, a marathon's supposed to be 26.2, as we all know, but this actual distance is 27.3. So. Fox tick. Yeah. So what I'm referring to here is a week ago, we all got an email that said that the course had to be adjusted. And instead of it being the standard 26.2 miles of a marathon that we all know, it was now 27.3 miles and then a sorry afterwards. I'm not counting this as an ultra. It's just a longer marathon. And I promise you that that extra 1.1 miles at the end of this race really played on my mind. I am. I'm filming and running. This is why I fall over. I'm not sure what's worse, the hill climbing or the mud. I think I'll take the hill climbing over the mud because I'm slip sliding my way and I'm crying for doing well. I've no idea of distance, but we're all good. I haven't looked at distance yet. We haven't reached the first marker, so we're not at seven miles yet. Not far though, doing well. Very windy, very windy. Uh, I've just checked my pace and we're going at a really, really good consistent seven minute a kilometer pace so far. 
no way I'm going to hold seven minutes for the entire route, but I'm ahead of my eight minute target. I probably say I'm about six miles in approximately. I think the first checkpoint is coming up, but it's really foggy, so I can't really see the scenery. I've got some good pace setters. There's some people that, when you do these events, you kind of yo-yo between. You know, they kind of stop to fix a shoe, and I take over, and then vice versa. They catch up because they're faster runners, but you kind of end up reaching a couple checkpoints together, and then depending on their ability, they either shoot off or I take off one of the two. So, probably the former. But yeah, really windy, doing really well so far. I feel really good. This is such a fun event. Really is. So pretty. I always say this about these events. You know, whether I'm running in central London in a heat wave, um, <laughs> or whether I'm running over the South Downs on the coast, on the south coast, in the wind, middle of winter in January, with gale force winds and a storm coming in. There's a storm forecast for tonight, so obviously this rain, it's raining, but the wind is the worst bit. It's just really windy. Look how exposed this is. The wind really is not the worst bit. I'm very soon going to appreciate that. So we've got to go straight up, up there, and then up there. So I didn't do a very good job of explaining where I've got to go, but there's a really steep hill coming up. So windy. Sovereign bar. I love sovereign bars. Oh my God. I don't know what the point of trail trainers are when I'm sliding everywhere. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, I got stuck behind that gate. I've been dropped by my, <laughs> that sounds like I'm talking about Zwift. I've been dropped by my pacing group, not because they're running particularly fast, but because I've stopped to film and uh, stopped myself falling over. They seem to plough through mud better than me. That might just be because I'm a wimp and I don't want to go tippy tumble because I am not because I am known for falling over on these on these runs. Uh, so. However, I will say that there is another big climb coming up. Not as big as the first 700 foot climb, but still big and somewhere I can employ my newly found superpower to catch the group that dropped me on the muddy flats. <laughs> I did eventually catch them on the climb and managed to overtake them, beating them to pit stop one, which I was very pleased with. They didn't even realise I was racing them, of course. Everyone's in their own mind and running their own race. It's a race against yourself and no one else. I just, I'm just very competitive and I enjoyed having that as a very small target over a short period. Go, go, go. Right, that's aid station one. Done. That's 11.2k. Next aid station is at 15 miles. What's that in K? That's exactly seven miles down. We've got a dead straight climb now. I'll show you, look. The GoPro really doesn't do it justice, but yeah, it gets a bit steeper up there. And then we go down the other side, I believe. And then we've got to go down to a valley where there's a very muddy river by, according to the safety briefing. Now we've got a really steep, steep descent, really steep. In a way I can describe it, it's like running on uh, clay or chalk. It is chalk, I'm running on chalk. It's not how I describe it, it's what it is. Running on chalk, really, really muddy chalk. It's like flour, wet flour. It's like wet chalk, because I'm running on chalk. Anyway, so I'm trying to not slip at the same time as not lose pace. So it's a balance between dying and finishing. Feel all right, feeling good. If I keep saying it, I will be. I haven't said sit rep yet. Sit rep, I feel good. 
The river in the valley had burst its banks only a few days previous and had only recently receded within the last couple of days or two, leaving muddy devastation in its wake for us all to then to have to run through. I had thought that this first seven or so miles had been pretty muddy, but that was nothing compared to the tough mudder carnage I was about to have to endure on the second half of this race. So for context, I will say that there are two races happening here today. There is a 27.3 mile marathon that I'm part of, as well as a 15 mile race on the same course, but it looped back, making it 15 miles instead of the distance I'm running. And we were all told at the start that the course was tougher than normal. And if we wanted to, we could loop back and follow the signs for 15 miles. This was our choice. Looking at the race results afterwards, I know that a lot of original marathon runners who signed up for the marathon event, started on the start line for the marathon event, then took this option to only run 15 miles. Now, you have to remember that this event is a runner's marathon. And what I mean by that is that it's not a race you sign up to lightly, nor is it one to complete as your first throw of the dice into the world of marathon running. I wouldn't recommend this event to anyone looking to try out long distance running for the first time. And the fact that some of these experienced runners took the option to loop back on 15 miles instead of completing the full 27.3 miles really goes to show how tough this event was because of the weather and also mainly because of the mud. I will also add that it's a very tempting offer when you eventually see the arrow to head back and I don't blame anyone for wanting to take this option. Plus 15 miles over this terrain with all this climbing in this amount of mud is still very tough and a race well run. Anyway, back to the muddy and windy action. I then started to run the wrong way. I missed the sign to turn right and another runner behind me shouted after me and then I was able to backtrack onto the correct route. Thanks. Give me a wave. <laughs> Thank you. I just wanted to catch you to say thank you for stopping me going the wrong way. Uh, I just went the wrong way. Oh, I'm too busy eating my energy gel. That could have been annoying. The guy behind me managed to stop me before I got too far. Luckily, I didn't turn the corner. There was a corner I was about to turn. Oh, my goodness. Okay, aid station two. Doing really well. I'm gonna stop. You're right? Yeah. Getting there. Well done. Thank you. Do you know what the distance is to the next one? Five, Five miles. miles. Five yeah. miles. Looking at my Garmin stats after this race, I'm really proud to say that the total time spent at the pit stops was 12 minutes. That's 12 minutes in total across all four. I'll share my total running time at the end, but my official finish time, including these 12 minutes, was um, you know pretty good con considering considering the conditions. Uh, oh, hold on, we've got naked bars. Oh yeah, I might have one of them. Yeah, yeah they are. Heavy, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah blue, I know the blueberry ones. Yeah. I didn't yeah. see them. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Thank you very much. Load, mate. Yeah. Cheers, load. mate. I'm still really heavy, and as I said before, weighing in at 15 stone. I am in some instances twice the size of a lot of these much faster runners. And for me to have the energy to drag my very, very heavy and tall frame around this course, I need the calories, I need to keep eating. Now, I normally blast through the pit stops as my motto has always been on events like these, spend only enough time to take on water, refill electrolytes, grab a cheeky naked bar and move on. It's really easy to get sucked into these pit stops and spend far longer than is necessary, losing precious time. You don't even realise it as you're doing it. There is also a cutoff time on this race. And even though I was way ahead of this cutoff time at this point, this can so very easily change when you're hit with challenges like the mud I'm about to encounter. Time can slip away from you. Oh my God, I'm eating a naked bar. I could stay at this. And then as I left this second pit stop, I passed the turn off for the 15 mile loop and ventured on into the marathon 27.3 mile loop. And as I tried to enjoy my newly acquired naked bar, I hit the worst part of the mud. <sighs> nice one. Cheers, mate. Oh, more mud. 
I'll let you go first, mate. Go on. <laughs> you show me the way to go. This was where the river had burst its banks previous and flooded all the surrounding paths and trails. This mud can do one. Apparently, this river here flooded. And that's what this is. It just cakes your feet up in like concrete. And your feet just get really heavy. Okay, we've got a bridge coming up to cross this river and hopefully get off this mud. I got naked bar number two and I'm not hungry at all, but I'm gonna force myself to eat it because I've learned the hard way that I can't finish these things the way I want to without the calories. I've got one gel for every pit stop. I'll take them just after the pit stop. <laughs> Running on these muddy trails, zap your legs, because you just can't keep a consistent pace. But this is nice. Look at this, flat as a pancake. Here we go, nice bit of tarmac. Oh. oh, it's like a road marathon now. No mud. Oh. Okay, one of the runners passing just said that we're coming up to the climb. There's a climb apparently. Hill, big hill, I have no idea. Uh, he seemed excited about it, so it must be big. Oh, look at that. It's like an old stately home castle so we must be running up to it fantastic how nice is this look at that wow that's impressive look how nice it's here that's really pretty I'm just sightseeing now. Oh, this is, this is lovely. Okay, this is my favorite bit. It's like something out of Postman Pat, or Lord of the Rings. Pretty extreme, Postman Pat to Lord of the Rings. Very windy, but again, it probably doesn't show it on camera, but this, yeah, nice steep bit here. Did you guys say that this was the last of the big peaks? Is this? Well, yeah, yeah. Absolutely no idea. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's the last of the big peaks. Okay, we're at the top of that climb. That was tough. We're at the top. Doing well. Probably can't hear a single word I'm saying. So windy. It's so windy. I'm just slightly grateful that it's blowing off my right shoulder and not head on. So windy. I'm at 23k. Really windy, my hat's gonna come off. I'm at 23k. And it's flat now, but uh, the ground's really muddy. I am past the point of running around puddles. So I'm just running straight through them. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Just had a real long incline section, but we beat it. We're doing well. Smashing it. Oh, let's get to the end, come on. Don't forget it. Yeah. <laughs> I have done that before. <laughs> oh, how are you doing? You okay? Okay, I blasted through pit stop three. I've got some, I've got some pretzels. Oh, this is where I go tippy tumble. Look at that. 
Okay, right, don't mess about, Ryan. One-handed, because I'm holding the GoPro, that's always clever. Right, we're over. Look how steep this is. All right, let's get down this without falling. Because if I fall here, I'm gonna go down like a rolling stone. And not in the cool 1960s way. And we're down. I've just lost loads of time there. I was so slow coming down those stairs. I just don't have a head for heights. Oh, so steep. I don't, you know, the camera does, does not do, do it just oh, so muddy. I'm not sure what's worse, the mud or the heights or the climbing or the descent. Okay. I'm at 30k. Um, a long slog up a slow hill. Uh, that muddy patch must have gone on for about 2k but yeah I feel all right actually surprisingly I don't want to jinx it touch wood because I don't want the wheels to fall off I'm just going to say now that I'm actually I don't mind hills hills are my jam apparently so I've picked off a few people where their pace has dropped and I've stayed at a consistent eight minute a kilometer pace even over the mud and then when I get to the hill even if I walk my walking I'm actually quite powerful up hills. But these rolling hills on the downs, I'm quite good at. I'm catching people up. Okay, right, 10K left. Um, this section, this section for the last 10K is, or the last 5K that I've just completed, it's really muddy, really bad. Really, really poor conditions to run in. Um, I'm not complaining, I'm just making excuses, really. But it just burns your legs because you're constantly trying to steady yourself. Oh my God, what's this? Oh, goodness. Aye. Ah, my legs don't go down that low. Fuck. Ah. My hands are caked in mud now. Um, I am well past the point of avoiding puddles or mud. My feet are caked. It's like wearing Frankenstein's boots. Um, but I'm just moaning. I've got less than 10K now. Just two park runs. Two park runs if they were on really hilly, muddy terrain. That's all it is. Come on, let's do this. Oh, it's wobbling. <laughs> the bridge is wobbling. It's like something out of Disney. Oh, have a look at this. So this is what I'm dealing with. There's absolutely no way you can keep a pace up. Look. Look at the state of this. Absolutely no way you're keeping any pace up going through sludge like that. But the problem is it's not the sludge, it's the sticking to your shoes. So now I'm carrying half that with me. Oh, stop moaning. Let's do this. How'd you run over this? Okay, we're at the last pit stop, uh, 36k, 7k, less, over 6k left to go. We just left the final pit stop, had some full fat coke, and now it's going to power up this hill. Just a park run left, just a park run, 5k to the finish, just a park run over really muddy, hilly terrain, that's all it is. Come on. I'm now climbing the last hill and this one's brutal. Oh my God. 38 and a half K and there's a steep, steep hill. Good news. I've just picked four people off, climbing it. 
four people that were in front of me. So I'm happy with that. Wait, right there. Now, as I came down this decline into Arundel, I saw a few more runners ahead of me that had obviously slowed and I set my eyes on them, managing to pass them over the next few K, improving my overall finish position. Then I set my eyes on one last runner off in the distance. I decided there and then I was going to catch him. And he was a, at that point a blip on the horizon. I didn't recall my attempt to catch him as I just had enough energy to either hold the camera or run as fast as I could, faster than the shuffle that I was doing. Now, my family who were waiting for me on the finish line to cheer me over the line were cold, but they were expectant. They were looking forward to seeing me. How are you feeling? No. Are you happy? No. Scarlett, my youngest, who now had control of a GoPro, took great pre pleasure in annoying her older sister, who didn't obviously want to appear on camera. Ooh, hello. I couldn't do these events without their support, and it's as much an endurance event for them hanging around in the cold as it is for me. So I just want to say to camera, thank you guys. I really appreciate what you do for me, even though I know they don't watch these videos, I still want to say it. There's poo there. So they were cheering me on from the other side of the riverbank. I had to run up the riverbank over a bridge and then back on myself to the finish line. Scarlet. Stay subscribed, guys. Make sure you hit that like button. And as I came into view, I could hear them shouting and cheering me on. I knew it was them screaming. This gave me a huge boost. Woo! Scott, you're just screaming. Oh, well, no. It's one more. <laughs> Woo! Wait, let me go around the corner. Woo! The sprint was on. Uh, uh. With only half a K left, I put on the gas and tried my best to catch that last runner between me and the finish line. He knew that's what I was doing. He also tried to run as well. We were both doing that weird shuffling run thing that all long distance runners do when they're trying to increase their pace past the point of exhaustion. <laughs> I didn't quite catch this last runner in front of me, but considering he was a speck in the distance when I first decided to catch up, I was happy to attempt this somewhat of a sprint finish. Oh, sorry. Thank you. Oh, hello. Oh, well done. Well done, mate. Good run. And that's it. That's the end of my race. 27.3 miles over some of the most inhospitable terrain I have ever, ever run on. And now on to the stats and finish times. Well, you won't be surprised to hear that my time is not a PB time. But then again, I never intended to enter a race like this and run anywhere near my PB marathon time. This event was all about enduring and overcoming a really hard challenge, learning new things and proving to myself that I still had it in me after two weeks of eating nothing but mince pies on a daily basis over Christmas. My time was, are you ready for this? Exactly six hours, 34 minutes and 20 seconds. 
I was well within the official cutoff time. That wasn't even an issue. I did have a time of a sub six hour target I wanted to achieve at the beginning of the race. But with the mud and the climbs and the conditions that just, you know, I was happy to finish the race with the time that I got. When you enter a race with almost 3000 feet of climbing in it, you don't expect the mud to be the hardest part, but it was. My ankles hurt from constantly having to balance and adjust my foot placement to avoid slipping. There were long, grueling sections that when you put your foot down to run, to push off, 80% of that resistance was lost to the sludge and parts were impossible to keep any kind of pace up on. And in the worst part, the worst part was putting your foot into mud and carrying most of it with you on the bottom and underside of your feet. It felt like you were running in moon boots. For what it's worth, looking at my Garmin data, I can see that I only walked for the major climbs and having to slow for the worst of the muddy sections. I'm very happy with that. With the exception of these parts, I was very happy to have run an average 8.59 per kilometer pace over the entire race. I'm over the moon with this. If you said to me at the beginning, you can take that, I would. I would 100% take that as a pace, knowing what I know now. Right, these three are freezing, so I'm gonna do a quick ending. There's a guy crossing the line. Happy with that, hang on, I have to press stop. Oh, I forgot to press stop. I've been here. How long have I been here? A minute, oh. two minutes. So, six and a half hours. I need to look at the official time. I'm so happy with that. I absolutely smashed this race. And even though I'm sure it will go down as one of the toughest marathons I've ever run, it was one I am extremely proud to have completed when many others didn't due to the conditions. Oh. I was also very happy to give my eldest a big hug on the finish line when she said she'd rather not as I smelt really bad. <laughs> you don't want to be in it. He froze them. She's frozen. We've got to go. Done it. So thank you for watching this video. Thanks to Tracy and the girls for being the best support crew a big 43 year old bloke could have when attempting to run a really muddy, hilly race for a really long time. So thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Please don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you see value in this video. I hope you appreciate how hard and challenging overcoming this really hard challenge was and hopefully see you in next week's video. Cheers guys.